So, publishing. Hey, are you visiting? You, you look. Hi, welcome. You're getting the publishing lecture. I'm sorry if you wanted to get the how to write books lecture, but. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, Jane, here have a have a have a sour gummies. Thank you for bringing someone to class. Ooh, look, and it flew over that way. That was a really good one. Um, all right. So, <clears throat> you're gonna have to ask yourself a few questions regarding publishing. All right. Uh, the first one is you probably nowadays want to consider self-publishing and you want to consider what has become called traditional. Oh, and that's the person I told not to call me back, probably. Yeah. Oh, no, that's not even mine. Whose is that? Oh, we have the same ringtone, man. <laughs> Default all the way. <laughs> uh, traditional publishing and self-publishing. Um, I have answered people's phones before in class saying, hi, this is Brandon. Um, I'm, I'm answering, you know, Jake's phone or whatever. Um, the reason for this being that self-publishing has become increasingly viable as digital platforms have become, um, become more popular. Um, recently, my, um, my, public, my sales are looking at about 50-50 digital um, and print. Um, it actually skews toward digital in the opening weeks. Um, and then um, kind of evens out at about 50-50, maybe a tad more print, like 60-40 or something like that. Um, but that's a pretty big deal. That's a major revolution. Um, this is why Borders isn't here anymore. Um, and this is why Barnes & Noble is probably closing half of their stores, um, they announced. Um, we have a digital shift going on. Because of this, some things are happening. Um, the primary one is that it has become viable to self-publish, where once upon a time it was really hard to self-publish, like super, super hard. You could do it, but it required money up front, a substantial amount, and a lot of marketing on your own. It still requires a lot of marketing on your own, but it doesn't require the, uh, as much money up front. So traditional self is viable. Um, Traditional still offers quite a number of things. Um, and you can go and you can, um, you can go online and you can find people talking about the virtues of one versus the other. Um, basically, what you're going to find online is that a lot of people who broke in right around the era I did or before will talk about the virtues of traditional publishing because it served us well. Uh, the people that are breaking in right now are talking a lot about this. Um, and there are a lot of resources for both of them. Um, Scalzi talks a lot about what, um, what's good about traditional publishing. If you follow his blog, he's got lots of interesting things there. Uh, Joe Conrath uh, talks a lot about uh, self-publishing and the virtues there. Those are two, a, a couple of names that you can go to find more research. I'll give you an overview today, but I'm by no means an expert on either one. I'm an expert at writing books. Um, and the publishing I've tried to pick up along the way where I can, okay? Traditional publishing, what you're going to get is you're going to get an advance. First off, um, you should not be going with anyone who's saying that they are publishing a traditional publishing model unless they give you an advance. If they don't, then that's not a contract that you should sign. Period. All right? Um, that is because nowadays, Particularly, if they're not giving you money, what that means is they're probably not going to give you all the other stuff that's in, that you get from, um, from the traditional, which are things such as um, editorial, marketing, publicity, cover design, copy editing, Proofreading. Um, let's see. I'm missing a few in here. Um, typesetting, not as big a deal as it used to be, but typesetting. Would going on tour fall into that category? That is considered publicity. Um, 
I'll, I'll talk about each of these things for you. Um, so, um, oh, co-op. So, these are the things that a traditional publisher can give you. Um, I'll also put brand name. All right. Um, a tr good traditional publisher ha is a brand. Now, you as a writer are making a brand for yourself. That's, that's your goal. We are um, eventually people will be buying your books because of your name, not because of the publisher's name. But when you start, you have no brand name. So having a, um, a nice uh, traditional publisher um, with a good reputation publish your book, it can mean a lot for um, readers picking up the books. It, I think, means a lot more in bookstores than it does in digital form because uh, a lot of us could recognize, I don't know if you do this, but you can recognize um, a publisher's book. Kind of by the cover design, you can get to know the logo, but beyond that, you'll see, you know, Tor does these gorgeous, big, hardcover, um, epic fantasies. Bain does these very nice pocket, um, you know, um, military science fiction books. You will look, you'll say, that's a Bain book. It looks like the other Bain books. Those have been good. I'll probably like this one. Um, that's part of the cover design. It's not just the artistry, it's the we can target this at people who have liked our books in the past that will like yours. Um, now, pretty important that a good traditional publisher will give you um, will be bookstore editions and library sales and, you know, all of this sort of stuff. Um, you'll get the print edition, which is still 50% of my sales. So 50% is a pretty big deal. Now, there is a lot of talk these days about traditional publishers who are doing ebook only. Have anyone, has anyone followed this lately? Uh, there's been a big kerfuffle about numerous publishers launching ebook only imprints and getting rid of the advance and the bookstore editions and things like that because it's just going to be ebook only. And those have been wildly um, derided by the, public, the writing community as unfavorable contracts because they're getting rid of too many of the things that a traditional publisher can offer. Because over here, I shouldn't put viable as one of its things. It is viable. You should just know that. Um, we do have a serious number, like a legitimate number of people who are making a full-time living publishing ebooks on their own. So what do you get over here? Control. Control is a pretty um, important one, and it's why a lot of people um, want to do this. You will get to make sure the book looks exactly like you want. You have the, the final say in everything. Um, the other big thing is you get 70% of cover. Well, of the, of the price. It's not really cover anymore. 70% of, of the money. I'll just say that. Um, you get 70%, OK? Um, uh, that um, over here, you are usually getting, um, uh, you are getting 10 to 15% on a hardcover, and 8 to uh, really 6 to 10% on a paperback, OK? And on an ebook, you're getting 25% uh, of 70%. What is that? Math people, there's got to be some of you in here. There always is. 25% of 70%. 17 and a half? OK. Right? So there you are. We'll just go with that. Uh, if people are watching online, they can be like, that's horrible. You get, but then if we did it wrong, it's because we're writers. We're not math people. So there you are. <laughs> so this is, this, is, this is the big sticking point for a lot of the self-publishers, is that they will give up 50% of the sales, the bookstore sales, in order to have control and 70% of the profit um, instead of 17.5%, which is... You know, that's a legitimately large amount. Um, you know, it's many fold what you're making off of each sale over here. And so your choice is going to come down to doing this. Um, there is also the detraction of, I should put up here, this is a big one, no gatekeeper. Um, with traditional publishing, you have to convince somebody 
to pony up the money. Where does the other 30% go to on self-publishing? Amazon or the, pub, the, 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 the re distributor. Re okay. Distributor, yeah. Yeah, 30% distributor. And that's happening over here too. It's just you're getting 25% of net with net defined as what they get from the distributor. Okay. Uh, it's not the 25%, it's not the net used in, in Hollywood accounting or music accounting. It is just interpreted as that, that 70%. So <coughs> this is a pretty big deal. Um, if a lot of new writers have the belief that their books would sell really, really well if they could get them out to people, but they keep getting rejections from editors that they don't feel are actually even reading their books or considering them. The overwhelming majority of those people are wrong. They just haven't written any good, very good books. However, there are legitimately a large number of people who are rejected every year whose books would sell because the editor is in a bad mood when they read it or the editor has um, read something recently that's just like it that they're trying to acquire already or because it was just the wrong fit for that editor. You know, you all hear the stories. How many times Harry Potter was rejected? Things like that. Would it be feasible to maybe get rejected by a traditional publisher, mm -hmm. then, then try to do self-publishing, get your book revised a few times, start selling some books on your own, and then go back and get it Yes, published. that is very viable. Um, and it, that, the, the way of the future that some people are saying that are kind of in between these two camps are saying they really think that what's going to happen is that all new authors will start self-publishing. Those who gain a fan base will then go to the traditional publisher for everything but this. The idea being that they will try to retain the ebook and let the publisher do all of this stuff that, um, that you can't do on your own.